everybody to the second Stellar Sound podcast episode. I'm so glad that you have tuned in with us because today we have a very unique artist that we want to introduce to you. She's called Hunbjörn, which actually means she bear in Danish. Her music can't be described or put in any particular boxes. I would say that it's very cool, obscure pop. She calls it dream pop. But let's just find out together, shall we? Her creative strategies, her journey, everything that she found instrumental in her career so far. We're going to speak about this. So hop on, go stellar with us. So... Welcome, Hun Bjorn. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly um, or if I butchered it, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to our second episode, Stellar Thank Sound you. Podcast. Now, Thank after you. the first episode, we, ha- we had at the end of it an icebreaker mm-hmm. question from Just Leo mm-hmm. for the second episode guest, and that is you. So yeah. the icebreaker question okay. from him <laughs> is... What is your favorite pizza and okay. should pineapple be on pizza? What do you say? Oh, exciting. What a good question to ask. <laughs> well, um, pineapple should be on pizza. Of yeah. course. It yeah, I good. agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite pizza? Oh, I don't know. Some, some vegetarian pizza, mushrooms, something, cheese tomato <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so springs. vegetarian yeah well i eat fish yeah oh how was that um, pescatarian yeah I yeah yeah pescatarian yeah oh. very healthy <laughs> well we move away <laughs> from the food topic for now but thank you just leo for your icebreaker yeah, question, good question. <laughs> so maybe let's see what does it mean to be a danish musician nowadays that's not going into the mainstream direction and started as a band now a solo performer what's that like Mm -hmm. well i've been a musician for for quite some time i think maybe like 20 years or so i've never really done anything else and uh, i actually i don't know where where are you at are you in holland right now Yeah, in the Netherlands. Ah, okay, in in the Netherlands, of course. I actually started studying music in in Den Haag, in the Netherlands, for at the conservatory there, um, and I started my first band there, which is which was called Lima Lima, and I had that band for a very long time, and I made three albums. Uh, also, I moved to Denmark after one and a half year and and started at the conservatory in Copenhagen instead. Yeah, and then at uh, yeah, then at one point I didn't, you know, I had to do something else, and I started as a solo artist, and I started producing uh, my music more and more. Yeah, yeah, I think you mentioned on Instagram that you started jazz singing in Den Haag. Yeah, I did. But it was not really your cup of tea. <laughs> no, no, no. I I think. Uh, Right before I went to Den Haag to study, I did my first concert with the, only my own songs, and it was uh, like a, you know, like a epiphany. Then yeah. it felt so much more true, and you know, the right thing to do. So when I went to Holland, uh, they wanted me to study like the whole, uh, you know, the the old the old jazz and the classics. And, yeah, exactly. And you know, I just wanted to write my own songs and and kind of experiment, experiment, and yeah, do do weird stuff. Actually, I did a lot of weird <laughs> stuff back then. Yeah, just testing out a lot of stuff. Mm. Being fearless. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, because personally, when I listen to your music, um, I really can't compare one song to the other. Mm. They're all different to each other. Like, for example, take Flutter of the Heart. Yeah. Very beautiful, but completely different to Who Are We to Love. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's actually two, from two different EPs. Yeah. Because um, when I started as a, you know, 
doing my solo stuff, I quit or I told my band that I was, you know, I wasn't going to continue it. And then I didn't know what to do for a while. And I actually wrote like a, a full album in Danish, but mm. that I never recorded and never published. And then I just kind of slowly started writing some new songs and I didn't know exactly what direction they were going in. So mm -hmm. I recorded like, a, you know, the demos on the piano and the yeah. demo vocals. And yeah, then I took them. it to uh, to a guy, a producer called Brian Betts. He's the guy behind the Sleep Party people. He's mm -hmm. an an amazing producer and uh, just an amazing uh, musician and uh, and we produced it together in his studio but the but the you know like the main thing was like the recorded piano which kind of i don't know like gives a sound to that whole first ep which is called in vacuo in vacuo yeah, yeah. so and then the second ep i did i produced it at home in my own studio before taking it to be mixed at Brian's studio and, uh, I, and then i worked with a lot more you know with my synths and not so much piano so it has like a different vibe to it the second ep they're very different yeah completely different yeah how did you decide to go into the more synthy ethereal sound um I actually want, I think I wanted to do that also with the first EP but uh, I, I I don't think I really trusted my own abilities <laughs> as a producer back then so I was uh, I wasn't sure I could do it so I just started with what I know really well which is playing the piano yeah uh, and then I got you know after that and after being in the studio and you know working more and more then uh, yeah I trusted more and more in myself and uh, Yeah, so I just started using my, my synths and uh, doing more and more of the work. Did you ever feel like uh, it was a struggle to put yourself out there as a one-woman band, so to speak? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a band when I'm when I'm out playing concerts. I have like a group of people that you know that come along, and I also, of course, play some solo concerts, yeah. which is very nice to have you know to do stuff with other people. But I actually think. I don't know. Maybe it's because I was in in a band in a group for such a long time that it's uh, it's easier, you know, on your own to to make like your musical vision really come out. <laughs> like you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. It, it becomes more true somehow. The mm, sound. Yeah, yeah. You don't really have to think about the input of other people. No. Which yeah, of course, can be very interesting and helpful, but it's great to be able to focus on your feeling yeah, uh, fully yeah. i actually think that you know like in certain periods you need like the input from other people and in other periods if you're like maybe defining a new sound or you know you're testing something you're experimenting with new sounds then then maybe you want to be alone for a while exactly before you know so 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 that how do you say that 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 the fundamentals of a new song or a new you know new album is is as strong as possible before you go out And get influenced by others yeah 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 i think i get you it's like you wanted to organically mm -hmm. come out of you first and then put it out there for others to perceive mm. let's say but what it boils down to for you first is to be authentic to yourself and then the way it's received is like a nice bonus yeah <laughs> but it's not really your main aim no no it cannot be otherwise life would be too hard you have to make music for yourself you know at first yeah and then you know you you put it out in the world but if you you know if you're somehow too much in the future or too much thinking about you know what other people will think then then it's hard making music at least for me <laughs> <laughs> What are you nostalgic of in a musical sense? What would you like to bring back? Like like uh, in old times? What what do you, what do you mean like like a Yeah. Yeah. Like, like um something a nostalgia from past musical scene mm -hmm. or things happening that you're not hearing anymore but you would prefer to be hearing. Mm. Well, actually, you know, I'm a big synth fan. Yeah. And uh, a lot of my synths are these old uh, synths from the 80s, you know, like old vintage analog synths. And the mm -hmm. sound of them is just different than the new digital one ones. So I really, really like that. But I think also maybe 
you know, before auto tune, <laughs> you you really had to. <laughs> you, you had, I mean, I love auto tune. I love the sound of it, and I love how it's used. But everybody sounds great, and it's also really really nice when people can you know sing, like mm. really sing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> and uh, using auto-tune in a creative way as a creative tool, that's one thing. But covering up yeah. if something is not happening or yeah. someone can't sing, that's a yeah, totally, that's different. totally different <laughs> scenario. Now, my next question is revolving around mm -hmm. the mental states that we all need to deal with in one way or another. Now, especially with the pandemic that's still going on and we have no idea when the end is gonna come. Mm -hmm. So what is your way of keeping sane in these times? Yeah, it's, it, it is difficult and I, I do feel it. And I think a lot of musicians and, you know, they, they struggle, with the, struggle with the circumstance in different ways. But um, yeah. for me, it's, What I do is I, I, I've been really, really trying to focus on my process and not being out in the future, as I talked about earlier. Yeah. But, and and I, every morning, actually, from Monday to Friday, I get up and I write three pages in, in like a journal book to just get rid of uh, whatever thoughts are in your head. And then I mm. meditate every, every morning as well. Wow. Um, to huh. kind of, yeah, to kind of center myself and, you know, And and to to make sure that I focus on the right stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally understand the need for that, especially now, mm -hmm. even more so. But the journaling is very, very much an intriguing aspect for me yeah. um, about what you're doing. What kind of journaling is it? Is it like a stream of consciousness thing? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a flow yeah. ride. Yeah, cool. you just yeah. put down whatever you think in that moment, and you don't stop. So, you know, if I actually had once, I was, I was, I don't, I don't know. I just woke up really angry, <laughs> and for like three pages, like 20 minutes, I just like put down all, you know, a lot of swear words and a lot of cussing, and yeah, <laughs> whatever comes to mind. <laughs> so, whatever. But it, but it's, but usually it's just like you know, it's totally normal stuff, like. Yeah, mm, yeah, I gotta yeah. call this person and today this happened and then, you know, I thought this and then I felt this and now I'm gonna do this, but maybe I should call him again. I'm not sure. Like <laughs> stuff like that, just to get it out of mm -hmm. your head. It's really, really useful. I think I know quite a lot of people who, who use this it and they all love it. And I recommend it to everybody. Mm. Because it's also a way of like, you know, It's also a way of starting, you, you like the process of a day. Mm, yes. Like you, you get something, you know, done and you write something and then you're already creating something. Yeah, that, that sounds familiar to me. I feel like I have read about this in a book. I'm not entirely sure if I'm correct uh, <laughs> in this. Uh, I also don't remember the name of the author, which is typical me, but the title goes something like The Artist's Way or The... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's called Julia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got I got it from there as well. She, I actually did it before. I did it. Uh, I didn't do it in the morning, but I did it during the day. And I've been I've actually been doing it since I was a child, uh, mm. but more like uh, you know keeping a diary, but just journaling and putting you know also like uh, lots of uh, to do lists in my books. Yeah. I have like plenty of books, which is also like song lyrics and and um, so I've been doing it for like a real long time. Mm, and then yeah. uh, actually last year, I think it was you know when when like uh, yeah Corona and COVID and all that started. I actually read that book, um, The Artist's Way. Well, I, I read the one which is called Creativity, and the, the, the author is called Julia Cameron. And it's like a 12-week mm, right. course, and you can follow it. And I did that. I actually stretched. I did that last year, and it's it's really cool. It's, uh, well, for people who are, like, kind of burned-out artists, I was not especially, but... Uh, I think it's great for them, but it's also good if you're like already in a flow or you're, you know, just writing something or, or starting on a new project, then you'll go through like uh, lots of emotions and just kind of 
it's a playful thing and like she has exercises for you every every mm-hmm. week and, and one of them uh, one exercise is to journal every morning and another is to do like a, a art i think she calls it an artist date you have to do something fun yeah. for yourself once a week oh i love this one i love yeah, it it's great it's great everybody should do it i loved it yeah agreed yeah Hmm. now i am again inspired so i'll get back to it yeah <laughs> yeah i feel like it like doing it again starting the habit of doing that again you should yeah no i'm just saying you really should it's fun it's fun it's uh yeah it's just good fun she kind of you know she wants you to try dancing and like other stuff than what you're actually doing Yeah. Mm, yeah, doing things that you haven't experienced so far, visiting places that you haven't seen yet. and Yeah, exactly. exactly. That, that kind of thing. Yeah. There's also another topic close to your heart concerning gender mm-hmm. in music business. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us more about your involvement in that? Because it's been quite significant. Well, uh, I think in 2019, there, there was a like a group of Danish uh, musicians, all girls or females, uh, we started like a Facebook chat or like a messenger thread. And uh, it was because yet again that year, like some numbers have come came out from the Danish radio saying that they only pres- played like 10% or less female musicians. Really uh, low. And yeah, it's it's not so. And there's a lot of bias in the music business, of course, I, I'm sure you know as well. Uh, I mean, when I was in school, I think I never had a class with another female. Really? Yeah. Or, or just usually it was only guys and then me. And it's mm. even worse if you're producing. It's uh, there's so few females and producing. So that year, a lot of people came together and started talking about like what we could do about it. And we started meeting up, meeting up, uh, mm, and having yeah, just discussions. And then we made a Facebook group, and. Uh, Like really, really fast, it became really big, and I think there's like a around two thousand female non-binary and trans people in it now, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's I think it's changed the way that the music business in Denmark is uh, is now, like one and a half year later, uh, because we kind of stand together and we discuss you know how it feels to be like the only woman in a room or you know how yeah yeah, how the music sounds different when you do stuff with with the other you know females or or when you're like uh, yeah playing with guys all the time you know have you been in a girl band or have you you know experiences with that i know you play some music right Yeah, yeah, I do. But for me, it's really a side thing. So I wouldn't compare myself or feel comfortable placing myself with the same kind of experiences that full time musicians such as yourself have experienced. But I can speak from having noticed some things Mm -hmm. um, in the rock and metal scene because, yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm a bit more active there. And uh, there is a certain labeling when you have a female lead in a band. You probably heard the female front end, mm. um, label. And it makes you wonder sometimes, is your music being liked and your craft or respected because of what you're yeah, coming up with mm-hmm. or because of a certain way that you look? And it's not exactly what you're talking about. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's similar. It's definitely part of it. Yeah, um, ideally it's a combination. People like your music and also the way you Mm -hmm. look. Nothing wrong with that. But what I'm mostly um, interested in is Mm -hmm. what you mentioned earlier about being the only woman in a class full of men. I find that really shocking that this is still a fact nowadays. It is, it is. I actually, yeah, I'm actually in the... Uh, I don't know in the what is that called in the examination board of the the pre conservatory in Denmark. Oh you know, yeah. I've, I, for the entrance exams, I sit yeah. there, and uh, for o- almost all the instruments, it's yeah. I think there's like one girl once in a while, but and and then of course there's uh, the the singers, mm-hmm. they are female. But it's 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 changing, I think, and definitely with the. For for if you start producing music, then it's there's more girls p- producing nowadays. 
like like the young ones not you know not like the professional ones but the, you know mm-hmm. like the 15 16 and 20 year olds there are more girls producing which is really really cool um, yeah 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 it's cool to see i've noticed as well and linked to that the social media presence the fact that nowadays we can all go into social media and craft mm-hmm. our image the way we see fit mm-hmm probably gives us a better platform regardless of gender or other aspects. This Stellar Sound podcast episode has been made possible with the generous help of Fey Games, the Dungeons and Dragons campaign monster. Join their Discord to know more. What is your experience with uh, the good and negative sides of uh, social media? (laughs) There's definitely both. Um, Well, actually, uh, I'm a, I'm a, well, in some ways, I'm a big fan of social media because, you know, it gives people like me who are, who are not doing, you know, exactly mainstream music, a chance to come out with the music. And I mean, there's a big audience out there in the world, like in Denmark is a small country. So for me, it's really important to actually be able to reach people who like the same kind of style and sound and, you know, songs uh, yeah. that I make. Um, that's that's awesome. And uh, everybody can kind of manifest themselves in their own universe and you know, Instagram and Facebook and so on. Um, that's the a good side of it, I think, and that's a great side. Uh, and also, you know, you get to connect with... Like, I mean, I connected with you on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. And also, what's uh, Sorana, Sorana from your team as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was at the forefront of this, actually. She found you. She knew you, so she was like, guys, we got to have her on the podcast. Uh, so thanks, Sorana, for this. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sorana. <laughs> Um, so I mean that that's and that's amazing and uh, and then also you know the world becomes a lot smaller yeah uh, because you can I can sit in Copenhagen and chat with you in the Netherlands so that's wonderful mm-hmm. but uh, and you know the bad thing about social media can be that uh, you know that uh, you always uh, mirror yourself or how do you say that you yeah, you kind of look at other people and the, yeah exactly you yeah. compare yourself to others. Um, and you, you kind of need to have that in check. You need to beware that you don't do that too much. Um, and it's, I think it's just, you know, human. Everybody does it. Everybody. You know, compare themselves. Yeah. But still you need to, yeah, you need to watch out. That Absolutely. It doesn't, yeah. yeah. Get too much. Uh, and also... And also th- another thing is that it can be quite stressful. And if you, uh, I'm actually not so extroverted, I'm quite introvert. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like I have to post something or I feel like I have to be, you know, online and, uh, oh, yes. and reachable. And uh, if you're not in that mood, then it can be a bit stressful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can relate to that yeah. a lot. Yeah, I think, I think most people can, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. But especially what you said about the extrovert, introvert thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm definitely an introvert myself, but I'm very good at masking it. <laughs> so yeah. uh, sometimes it's very funny how you can really give off a certain vibe that's not your true essence. Mm-hmm. If you're creating, you'd better be authentic, right? So it's very interesting, the yeah. balance. Yeah, it is really interesting, and it's of, it can also be difficult to find the right balance. But uh, but it's also kind of great if you manage to be yourself and share your whatever wisdoms you come with and whatever values you have in in you know in that authentic way. Yeah, I, and I think then actually if you do it, then you, you you're able to connect on a like a deeper plan with the people you meet. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree Mm. with this. And um, because I feel like if you're authentic, 
the other party will definitely sense that in one way or another, um, mm. whether you're authentic or you're not. Yeah, exactly. And so it's going to influence in a positive way if the person that you're speaking with can sense that you're being yourself. And uh, yeah, that's what we strive for, yeah. I feel, <laughs> all of us. Yeah, I totally um, agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So I also know that you're a big Harry Potter fan. Oh yeah, you know oh, yes, that's true. I've delved in the uh, deeper into these <laughs> facts, um, so I know you are. Um, so I have to ask you who's your favorite character, but also what your Patronus would be oh. and uh, what your house you're oh, in. Oh, I'm, I'm definitely in Gryffindor. Definitely Gryffindor. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure. Fearless. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Looney Luna is my favorite character. <laughs> Remember her? Of course. Yeah, definitely. She's my favorite character. Oh. <laughs> Luna Lovegood. Yeah. yeah she's, Lo Looney Luna. <laughs> she's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read I read all the books quite a few times, actually. And we have them both in English and in Danish here. And uh, my my daughter, uh, who's eight, she just we just got her the first two books in these really nice, um, yeah, kind of you know for kids so they have graphics and pictures, and we're mm -hmm. gonna read them now with her, which They're is they're cool. magical. But yeah. I don't know what my protonus should be. Maybe a rabbit. Mm, yeah, a, rabbit. a rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was Luna's patronus. Was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do. Yeah, I think it was. In one of the movies when they were practicing in the room of acquirement, the secret yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. secret yes. room, um, at the end, I remember it in the movie visually, um, it was running around, the bunny, her yeah. <laughs> patronus. Yeah. That's a, that's a, you're good at remembering. <laughs> <laughs> visually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What is the best comment that you have received about your music? And then also a troll comment that you can think about to share with us? Oh, um, the best? Hmm. Actually, I played a concert not so long ago and the, this guy came up to me afterwards. I think he, 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 he commented on a video of mine on Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. of one of my songs. Um, And he came up to me afterwards and, and yeah, just told me how much it meant. It's a song called Keep Breathing from my yeah. second EP. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he just said that it really, really touched him, like mm -hmm. way in that he understood, you know, from where I was coming from, what yeah. I, uh, what I was gonna, uh, trying to say with that song. And I don't know, somehow in the way he said it, I could f just feel him. Yeah. 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 And it meant a lot. It's yeah. beautiful. C Because often people just say stuff like, uh, you know, sounded great or you're great or the more generic you know. um, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And and I don't know, for me, it's just like uh, it, then usually I just say thank you. And that's nice of you and stuff like that. But if people yeah, say a little bit more, you know, what the music means to them, it can that makes a difference. So he was really nice. That was nice. Yeah. The meaning of this song, um, the way I understand it, of course, mm -hmm. is also kind of similar to what we talked about earlier, about the comparison aspect, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. yeah. It is. It was actually a song I wrote after there was this, uh, I was watching a documentary about these four girls who were, they, all of them were like um, super perfectionistic and super influenced by uh, Uh, yeah, social media and comparing themselves to others. So you, oh, you're totally getting go. that right. And yeah. um, a few of the girls, like one girl, she she um, she changed her clothes. I think like ten ten or twelve times before going out. Wow. And um, yeah, their lives would just kind of stop. And I, I was watching it, and I just felt like you know. <gasps> You just need to breathe a bit, you know, yeah. like relax. Mm -hmm. No, let it go, man. It's it's not that important. And then mm. I, yeah, and then I wrote the song. So it's actually mm -hmm. it's actually to those four girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's quite scary, actually, to imagine yourself going back in time, thinking of yourself as a teenager, and mm -hmm. then in the same regard 
I can't imagine being a teenager thinking so much, overthinking about how I'm going to be perceived. And I'm just so happy I didn't have that, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't know how it is to be 13 and have social media either, you know. Mm. <laughs> but the worst, um, you yeah. asked me about the worst thing somebody told me. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was also with the, the last EP next summer, I got I got a really bad review. I got a semi bad review. But the, in that uh, review, uh, the, the, the reviewer said something like, you know, that it was... Uh, the songs were too much the same mm. and uh, and I don't feel mm. they are no. and, uh, you said they weren't earlier mm -hmm. but I, I don't know somehow that hit me it was like what <laughs> you know yeah so yeah. I'm trying to let that go as well <laughs> but that's the worst yeah yeah unfortunately or not depending how you look at it we are paying a lot more attention to mm -hmm. um, negive stimuli like 80% more than the yes, positive. Really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, that's like an evolutionary psychological mechanism, primal instinct, mm -hmm. you know, um, ensuring survival. And you had to be very aware of what's around you. Yeah, um, yeah. Being surrounded by so many dangers. Uh, dangers, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that could impact you and actually kill you. Yeah, so you're noticing. All that is yeah, yeah. endangering you. Yeah. Yes, and our mm. brains haven't really changed mm. that much no. ever since then. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Mm. Yeah. Now, I am very excited to do a little game with you <laughs> <laughs> um, about choosing between two things. Um, we can call it shooting stars yeah. to keep with the stellar theme. So I'm starting now. Singing okay. or playing an instrument? Playing an instrument. Night or day? Day. Mozart or Howard Shore? Or who? <laughs> Howard Shore. <laughs> then I guess Mozart. <laughs> well, then I'll take Mozart. <laughs> Björk or David Bowie? Björk. Deep space or deep waters? Deep space. Snape or Dumbledore? Dumbledore, of course. <laughs> Well, well, actually, Snape is pretty cool as well. Yeah, right? Because yeah. we just get to understand how cool yeah. he is at the very end. Yeah, that was important. That was yeah. an, an important moment. Mm. Yeah. Very vital moment. I'm sorry for the Harry Potter <laughs> nerdiness going on for the listeners if you don't care. Mm. But we care. So, concerts or clubs? Concerts. Fire or ice? Ice. MTV or VH1? VH1. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you were going to say VH1. <laughs> Do you think that a particular lifestyle is connected to also a particular genre of music or style of music? Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, there's definitely different... Uh, genres and types of musicians i have a because i played a lot of jazz when i was younger i have a lot of friends in the you know in the jazz um, society or in denmark and they're definitely different from the you know the people producing pop and electronic music and there's a whole uh, a lot of the like for instance the more like like the, the also the classical composers and the jazz people they're all often like well educated and they know a lot about music theory and so on mm -hmm. and you know and uh, a lot of the producers and the electronic songwriters they're just kind of you know going more by intuition and yeah learning by doing i guess yeah more like self-taught and practically oriented mm -hmm. yeah but i think like even though they I mean, the, the music styles are so different that the people are also different. But I think it doesn't matter what you do if you do something creatively. Like you can be a painter, painter or, you know, an actor or something, you know, something different. And I think all creative people have something of the same. Mm, yeah. You know, like some of the same traits, you know, they have to be open 
in a certain way to in for them to be creative. Yeah, this openness that you're talking about, the way I understand it is like being open to influences actually, being open mm -hmm. to the world around you. Mm -hmm. It's like a little internal machine and then you come up with stuff and you create. A bit like an amalgam of what's happening to you and what you mm -hmm. make out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But how do you see it? Well, I see it the same, but I also see that you you have you have to be quite consistent also. You, I mean, a lot of people can get ideas and start, you know, a project. and uh, But at, at a certain point, it's also work. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just I just mean that, you know, at a certain point, if you have to, when you first write a song, then you start and you have the inspiration, you take stuff in and, you know, it, it's like a demo. And then when you take it to the finished product, pro, uh, product sorry, then uh, you need to be, consistent and you need to you know yeah. to work it all the way through to the end and that's that can sometimes be difficult and a lot of people I, I think they yeah they stop too early and then they don't finish their product uh, their projects yeah why do you think that is I feel like uh, maybe because we want to have instant gratification to see results very mm -hmm. quickly yeah I think it's because you start doubting. It's you know you, you've been working on something, and then you, at a certain point, you, as a musician, you heard the same thing over and over and over, and and then you there's you know there'll be a moment where you you'll ask yourself like, is this really any good? Is this uh, you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is this? Inevitably, yes. <laughs> and then um, yeah. I don't know, then you start doubting and then you have to find, you have to kind of find it in yourself to trust yourself again and, you know, to focus again on the process and, you, you know, just take it all the way to the end in order to, and then, I mean, for me at least, I don't think, I always like the end products, but in, sometimes, you know, during the process, I, I will be, you know, I'm, I won't be sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the journey is a ride and uh, yeah, then yeah. you arrive to a positive yeah. destination at the end. Yeah. Cool. So what are the major themes in your music, in your songs? Hmm, the major themes? Hmm, I think it's about being a human in balance. You know, finding like I, I think actually the major themes are, or the major theme is like you know finding the balance between black and white, or you know living in the gray zones and accepting yourself and accepting mm -hmm. others. That everything is kind of a balance in life. Mm, beautifully put, <laughs> really. Um, I would love for you to run us through your creative process, how you design mm -hmm. your videos, how you. Because basically you're doing a lot of it yourself, right? You're wearing a couple of hats. Uh, yeah, some some of yeah, I do a lot of stuff of my own on my own. I I um, I do I did some of uh, like some of my music videos. Uh, I kind of directed them myself. I'm mean, I'm I'm actually working on a new one right now, which mm. I'm very much doing on my <laughs> own. Uh, and all my I do a lot of videos where I play. Just uh, you know, play the songs uh, in a solo oh, yeah. live perform performance. Yeah, I've seen them. Uh, yeah, and that's fun. But I do have help for like the bigger music videos. I I I work with a really great director, and also you know some uh, light people and all that. His team of people. But uh, I think what drives me most, mostly in the, you know, as a as a musician or as an artist, is actually learning new stuff. So I always kind of put myself in these situations where I have to learn, you know, something <laughs> difficult, and that it, I, I I think that's what the that's what makes me the most proud is you know learning something new and being able to say, hey, look at this, I did that, you know, <laughs> I thought it was really difficult, and then I actually managed to do it, and yeah, that makes me just proud, and that's I don't know what makes me keep going. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, which instruments can you play by now? How many? Or well, um, I play a lot of instruments. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I know you play a lot of instruments, but I yeah, don't I know do how, how many and which ones. Yeah, I, I, um, 
I, I started on the recorder, you know, the flute, and I played that for many years, and then I worked my way up to the accordion, mm -hmm. which was like a big thing as a kid, and I also played that for many years. And uh, then I started playing uh, yeah, piano and synths, and a bit of guitar, and uh, some bass and some drums, and now I play a lot of cello, which is my favorite instrument at the moment. Wow. Yeah. If That's I could, I would, a, you know, practice. Such a beautiful practice. sound. Yeah, definitely. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not, the, see, I only played for like three or four years, but, <laughs> but I practice a lot, a lot. Like maybe if I can, I, I try to practice at least one or two hours a day. Wow. Which is uh, solid. Not always <laughs> I can manage that, but at least one. But uh, yeah, so I really, really like it. I'm, I, th I haven't used it. I mean, I had other cellists play on my music, but I haven't played on my own music yet. But I think I'm gonna, I just had a pickup installed on my cello. Mm. Uh, and I, I'm gonna do something with that pretty soon, I yeah, think. Yeah, you definitely yeah. should. It's just such a beautiful sound. It is. I'll be so curious to, to check whatever you do with some cello in there. So, we would also really love to know which records, let's say three, you would pick out if you had to listen to only these three until the rest of your life. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hard, eh? <laughs> uh, like one would definitely be Misery is a Butterfly with Blonde Redhead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can listen to that. I, I mean, it's my, I think it's my one go-to record that I listen to often. Yeah. Mm, what else? I'm not sure, but but can I pick with just one? Then it would be that. Yeah, sure. If you're certain that this is the one that you can listen to the the rest of your life, then it's definitely the right choice. Um, yeah, it is. Actually, I have I have. Uh, there's also this Norwegian singer called Emilia Nicolas. Do you know her? Mm, no, never heard of she her. She has. Uh, she's she's amazing. I love her, and I've been uh, listening to like she has three albums out. One from last year, but all of them are great. But the two last ones, uh, I, I, I've been listening to them on repeat. So I would bring them along as well. Mm, we love yeah. recommendations. <laughs> so I'm checking this out later. Tell us about artists that you find inspiring. Well, I find her inspiring because she sings like she sings really really amazing and and so different from how i sing she has like a lot of uh, coloratura you know like yeah. embellishing yeah. like and she sings she has this very i don't know but Nor i think norwegian people they often like uh, have very light and, and bright voices mm -hmm. and she's uh, she's one of them and sounds amazing so i really like her but i also like there's also an, like a young danish electronic duo called smats and they just released a new single called Believer, I think. And that's really interesting. I really like it. It's, it's we, I, th I don't think they're like really musically educated, but they do something new and exciting that I really dig. More power to Scandinavia, I would yeah. say. <laughs> uh, go stellar, Scandinavia. <laughs> what is the first thing that you associate with stellar sound? Stars, stars, yeah, stars yeah. for sure. Yeah. Also, there's a, actually a electronic music fest festival in Copenhagen, which is called Stella Polaris. Hmm. I haven't heard yeah. of it. Maybe we should check it yeah, with the should. podcast. You should <laughs> do a little research. Yeah. And now for our icebreaker question that you need to pose to our third guest. Mm. What will it be? Okay. Then uh, what? is your favorite ice cream flavor mm, tasty yeah. questions we continue on that path <laughs> <laughs> we stay i don't know there was a uh, after well, the was pizza. on top of my mind after yeah. the pizza question <laughs> <laughs> understandable well and if it's an icebreaker it can't be too serious right nope yeah exactly mm -hmm. well thank you so much for being our second guest you're welcome in Bern. It was really yeah. amazing to get to know you outside <laughs> of the socials and explore your universe. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. Thank you, listener, for tuning in with us for our second episode. 
that was quite all right. It's lovely to hear from you. It's lovely to get your feedback. And I want to thank also the team of Stellar Sound Podcast once again for making this happen. And not to forget our sponsor, Fay Games, spelled as F A E Games. Fay Games. Feel free to join us, as always, in our Discord server. Follow us on Instagram, our Facebook page, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and of course, give us feedback on how we can make it even better for our third rocket launch. See you then.